Hi, it's Wayne O'Keefe, and my goldfish have taught me a lot about fishing. Now, I never ever thought that there was a relationship between pet fish, such as I've got here in these outdoor ponds, and wild fish. But the more I have observed them, the more that I've found that there is a relationship, and you can learn a lot about your pets. I've had these uh, these little tanks here or these, these ponds here for a number of years. They're just uh, plastic tubs that I've put a little bit of a frame around so that they look a little bit presentable and I've got three areas in them. Uh, one area is for uh, a larger fish, <laughs> one's for medium and one is for babies. Well it's not too scientific I guess and the thing is that in raising the babies and working out how they feed and grow, in observing the adults and how they respond to various stimuli I've really learned a lot about fish. Uh, these fish here, are, they're fed every day, so they're, they're habituated to being fed. They, they know they're going to be fed and they respond accordingly. Often they'll come up, um, they'll be swimming on the top, etc. when I go to feed them, so they'll be waiting for food. Just something they've been taught. And when I'm burly fishing, I've noticed that I fish a spot uh, for long enough and sometimes over subsequent days. So if I'm on holidays and I fish the same spot over subsequent days by putting burley into those same spots, those fish become habituated to knowing that the burley is there. So I, it's the same thing applies. The other thing is the stimuli of sound and um, vibration. Uh, there's quite a bit of research on whether fish hear or not. Now they do have uh, an ear-like structure in their head so that they would be able to hear in some way. Certainly, sound carries further in water than it does in air. Notice in these ones that if I thud around on the area on the, the soil in front of these things, the fish dart away, so they're immediately scared by that. Now that's fairly obvious. If you club around on a bank anywhere, then you're going to scare the fish. But also, one of my neighbours has a Harley Davidson motorcycle. When they start that up and then they drive by, the fish also react to that. So it's important to know that those sounds can carry. Now, speaking like this, I'm not sure that whether they pick that up or not, but if I was to shout, maybe they would. So the idea of quietly approaching your fishing spot, not thudding around and being still, obviously count for a lot. This is a small aquarium I've got in the house with a couple of goldfish in it. That thud you just heard is me dropping something and the reaction from the fish was really quite clear. So if you're fishing, you're approaching especially shallow streams and rivers that aren't that wide, it's so important to try and be quiet, to keep a low profile and most of all not be stumbling around on the bank. If you don't have room for an aquarium but still want to have fish, you can have a very small pond like this. This is a, a tiny garden pond. It's only about 60 centimeters across. It's big enough for a couple of goldfish. I've had this for about nine years and it's wonderful to watch the fish during the day, but it's great to see how they react to food, light conditions and other stimuli. So it is a bit of an education in the way that fish will react to those things that are around them. Now, these fish have just been fed and you can see the little pellets of food on top, but you'll also notice the way that they're feeding. They don't confidently stay at the top and bolt their food. What they do is they're swimming underneath, waiting for a time when they feel safe to grab a piece of food and then submerge again. Now, this, these conditions here are different to where I fed the other fish. The fish now are reacting because something has scared them. And this is a great observation because you can see that what they will do is hit and run on that bait. If you were fishing at this time, you know that you might get taps on your rod, which won't last long. And if the fish are very skittish, if they're scared like this, then anything that doesn't feel right, doesn't feel natural, they won't touch. Or they're going to taste it. And if they don't like it, they're not going to actually keep it in their mouth for that long. So it is worth observing this type of thing because some days they're not like this and they're very confident. If you want to move up from something small you can to something a little bit more elaborate like this. 
I made this all myself. I bought a couple of builders tubs, or well, three of them for these three ponds. I put a bit of a structure around it so it looks nice. And this has been fantastic in allowing me to not only have fish, but really observe what they do. And because it's out in the sun, it gets sun, it gets shade. Uh, I, I have a chance to observe them throughout the day, throughout different conditions. And it's so different when it's windy or when it's night in the way that they actually react to all of those stimuli. And of course the other advantage is you get to keep some really beautiful fish which is always a pleasure. It's funny but ever since I've had the ponds I've also had birds arriving at my house. These are a couple of rainbow lorikeets. They come over quite frequently. I feed them about only about once a week so that I don't overfeed but it's just it's beautiful to have them around. They're such beautiful birds. These fish here smell a pellet, a food pellet, on top of that lily. So they're underneath the lily, there's one little pellet there. That really strong sense of smell is drawing them into it. There's one thing I really notice about these is the, sm the tiniest piece of food can be picked up by them as far as smell is concerned. So more than ever being their eyesight and hearing, uh, smell is incredible. And this is why burley works so well, I guess, because uh, they pick up on the tiniest sense in the water. And if we're putting that in near our bait, then we've got the best chance of drawing those fish in. And clearly, uh, they can respond to that burley. So that's why I always use it. So to put this into practice, I was fishing the Barwon River and I was cast into the same spot every time. So I used a marker over the other side of the river, which was just a bush, and I was using that as my target. I would cast that every time, and what was happening is that the burley was building up in that spot. So I'd been casting for about 45 minutes. Um, I had cast in about every four or five minutes, so there was a fair bit of burley in the spot. Every time I cast out, I'd burley up again, I'd put burley in my burley cage and, and cast that out. Uh, what it did is it started to bring in the bites. So I was, I was getting uh, lots of small bites and I'd had hits and missed a few bites, but I, the fact is that the fish were coming into the area. So they have, were becoming habituated to the fact that there was food in the area. And in actual fact, it could have been that the, um, that the splash of the burly cage hitting the water was the thing that had attracted them. So after that short uh, period of time after the casting, here it was, I'd got a small fish. So this was good. I was bringing in small fish and even though it's only a small mullet that's okay because the big ones hopefully will follow and it's the uh, the burly and habituation them knowing it's coming that brought them in. <laughs> 